Hey everyone. Um, what I want to show today is how to do surface imperfections in Lumion. Now, I will say that this is not the most refined way. Um, basically, like there might be a way that you could get even more accuracy with it by um, like bringing it into something like Blender 3ds Max. You might be able to actually bake in uh, more information, but I feel like that's a ton of extra work for kind of what it, you know not like for what has to be done in Lumion uh, and it's probably not going to be worth it so what I want to focus on is just kind of how to make almost like a shell over your object and then how to properly bring in the texture so that it will kind of sit on top of it as I said it, it's not perfect um, if you do think that what I did uh, in the opening video is good you're like I wanted to do that then this is the tutorial for you um, as I said, I don't want to try and get too, too complicated. Um, I will be using Blender just for one quick thing. Um, however, you don't need to use Blender. Um, you, you can do this in SketchUp. It just in SketchUp, I don't like the way that it, it kind of scales. Like in Blender, I can make it scale out right from the middle. Um, whereas in, uh, in SketchUp, it kind of makes you pull the side. So it takes just a little more adjusting, but I think you should be able to do everything, um, that I do here in SketchUp, even with the uh, vases, once I start looking at that. Um, so first things first is I'm going to look at the uh, the window. So uh, if you notice in the video, I have like almost like a fingerprint uh, all over the um, all over the um, the window. So um, I will just say now that I have uh, I did get all the surface imperfections from Polygon. Uh, there are some free ones. I think I might have used one paid one, uh, but all the links to these textures will be below. Um, and I'll label if it's free or paid just so that people can uh, grab them depending on uh, if you have the extra money to um, pay out if you want one uh, in particular. Uh, so what we're gonna do is uh, we will have to open up Photoshop and SketchUp. So uh, I do use SketchUp just to model like the rooms and stuff like that. So I'll probably pop the roof off of this quickly. Uh, I'll also share this model if you want. I just unfortunately can't share uh, the vases. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to get a layer on top of the glass so that um, we can basically just put the texture over it. Um, that's the best way, in my opinion, to do surface imperfections in Lumion is just make a copy and just bank it so it's like one thirty second of an inch off of the the surface basically like if it's SketchUp. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click like right here. Um and then you can have it so it's uh you can have it just right on top if you want because we can use flicker reduction. Um and then where did I have that actually? I grabbed it so yeah I grabbed it right in the corner there. So I'll bring it right here, lock it in and that should be fine. As I said it's gonna flicker but that doesn't matter. So maybe I'll just make this pattern so we can see it easily and click that. So um, that should be good. And yeah, you should see it flickering a tiny bit. That's completely fine. We wanted to do that. So uh, I'm going to open up Photoshop now. Um, if you um, if you don't have a photo editor, um, I think there's one called like Pea Shoot or something like that. I can't. I, I remember a viewer had mentioned it to me. Um, it has something to do with P E A, like P. Um, but I think it does uh, a lot of the stuff that Photoshop can do for free um, and it's cloud-based. I just, I haven't used it before, uh, so I will be using uh, Photoshop for this tutorial. Um, now, so I have a couple of, uh, couple of files here. And this one, um, as you can see, it just comes with a white version, a black version of the, the dots or the, the, the dust wipes, and then also the normal map. So what we want is for the, the actual color, we want to have the black one on top. Uh, and the reason being is because we're actually going to cut out all of the black um, background there. And all you're going to be left with is the white, um, the white kind of like splotches. Whereas if you look at the other one, it's the opposite. So you have all these white spots, but um, the black is there. So, um, yeah, the, um, so what we're going to do is we're now going to cut out this background. Uh, what I like to do is drag this one in and, uh, then we're going to fiddle with this a little bit, but the first thing you're going to have to do once you drag them both in is go up to image 
mode and then go to RGB color. And now as you can see, we have all these channels here and we're gonna do the same thing here, image, mode, RGB color. Now, what we're going to do is I, I'd like to drop them both in just because it's I, like, you know, you could just duplicate this, but this is kind of how I like doing it. So I'm just going to invert this with control I, and then I'm going to hit control A to select it all. And I'll hit control C. Now I'm going to go back into my main one. So this is the overlay one. Uh, I'm going to go into channels and then I'm going to click this right here. So this will add an alpha channel. And then right after I click that in, I just hit control V and now it's in. So the way that you can check if you did this right, uh, and we did do this right here. So when you flip that back on, um, everything that is red is going to be cut. So if we kind of zoom in on this a little bit, as you can see, the white is standing out. So that means the white will not be cut out and that's good. Um, so this one I think is good to go. Um, we're just going to go to save as and then I'll put this in service imperfections. I'll just drop this and go overlay one. Uh, I don't know, just, oh, uh, I guess I'll just call it color. So, oh, actually I will mention this one thing. We're gonna go to file, save as, and you save this as a targa. Um, this is very important because that lets us get 32 bits uh, worth of channels and the bits from uh, that go from 25 to 32 are our alpha channel. So that's going to be telling Lumion uh, what's transparent and what's not. So we'll just save this, make sure 32 bits is selected, hit OK. And now we will go back into Lumion. Uh, I will just turn the roof on. OK, so this is what we should see. So what we're going to do is we're going to click right here. And you want to make sure, like since they're right on top of each other, you want to make sure you have checker plate. And then we're going to go to flicker reduction in settings. And then we're just going to drag that over. And I believe that that should. <laughs> I'm actually not sure which one, which way to go. That should be fine for now, though. Um, so, yeah, we'll go checker plates, select the color map. And then I'm going to go into um, desktop surface imperfections. Where? Hold on a second. Where did I save this? Uh, oh, okay. Sorry. So I actually put it right in here. Uh, regular 3K. And then here sure is the Targa. This will just take a second. Um, now, uh, you can't see it too, too well when you first bring it in. That's because the map scale is kind of like weird on it. I also found that when it's on the window, it can be a little more difficult to see. Um, so yeah, you can play around with the map scale, but as you can see, you might not get the best results with that. Uh, so what I actually was doing is I would go back into Photoshop and I'll just turn this off for a second. And with, um, I guess you could just do this for both of them. So you just go into raw camera filter and this is in the second one, uh, like the one that we inverted. And if you bring the exposure down or up, as you can see more and more is going to come out. So you can get like more of an effect. Um, you just go filter raw camera, by the way, if anyone didn't catch that. Um, but yeah, so if you bring the exposure up, you're going to get more white and if you bring it down, you're going to get more black. So in this case, um, you can actually make it like have more surface imperfection just by changing the contrast. So what we'll do with this is we'll say copy, and then I'll actually go into the layer here and I'll copy this, delete that. And then I'll do the same thing here. So um, yeah, and then th what this just did is this kind of upgraded it or I guess it made it so it's just more like it's more dirt um, So f I will go save this as a Targa now click on this I think that actually wasn't my original Targa, but it was from when I was testing it anyway So it should give the same result, but uh, if we go in here now and uh, bring the map scale down a little bit. So yeah, as you can see, it's starting to show through. I did have one that actually had more on it. Um, and like, I'll probably use that for the, uh, the vases just because you can see it a little more clear. Um, but yeah, to recap that, all we really did was I just put a, like a plane over my window and then um, I just with Photoshop, I put a 
I took the like the black version, the one with the black background. That's the one you want to use for the color and also the uh, transparency. Because if you take the Targa, you put the 32 bits onto it, then Lumia will be able to snip out the background. So then all you're left with are those white like splotches, like fingerprints, whatever it is. And so you can put it on the window. Um, it's not perfect. And if you look at this and go like, oh, those are way too big. You know, you can just scale it down. And that's part of the reason why I like doing this. I don't like doing the the trick that most people would kind of think with surface imperfections. You're like, oh, just put that on top of the normal map. It doesn't really work like that because um, let's say you're doing a chair, for example. If you just take the fingerprints and you slap it on top of the normal map, that entire chair only tiles on the normal map once. So you're not doing like a bunch of... Uh, you know, it's not like eight times where like the, the, the fingerprints won't look huge. Like they'll get blown up because it, it'll be like one fingerprint might take up the entire seat of the chair. So it's going to be way too big and it just won't give you the result you want. That's why I think that if you are going to do this, you kind of have to separate them out so that it, you, you get this uh, this sort of effect. Um, and if it's actually, if it, it turns out that it's like really heavy and it's like you don't want to go back to Photoshop and fix it, uh, you can turn the transparency on. I, I found that that helped kind of... Uh, clean that up a bit but that being said i find the transparency also makes lumion kind of like stutter and like get fuzzy a little bit uh so that's just something to keep in mind uh so the second part i'm going to show you is how to put it on an object that isn't just a flat plane as i said if you're kind of willing to just sit there and kind of fiddle with it you can do this in sketchup but i'm going to show you uh how to do it in blender um, blender is what i use um a lot for Lumion because Blender makes Lumion so much more powerful. You have so many more tools that you can use. Plus, uh, there's a free add-on um, called the uh, SketchUp import for Blender. So as long as you're willing to just kind of make fix your groups a little bit so that there's not too many nested groups um, and that sort of thing, then you can just bring your SketchUp model right into Blender, uh, play around with it, and then export it into Lumion. So I think it's worth... Um, you know, I think it's worth looking into if uh, you've ever learned like wanted to learn Blender, um, then this add on will really help you kind of bridge that gap. Now, I have a, an asset manager, so I'm just going to go and find a uh, just some vases I can bring in. So in the video, I use this one, so I might as well stick with it. So if I go into uh, I guess there's no need to rendered mode, I'll go into material preview and then this is what we have. So what I want to do is I want to make um, an outer shell for these three um for these three uh vases here but um obviously i don't want to like if i click on it sorry i can go into tab i don't want to have to click each of these faces individually so what i'm going to do is i'm going to hit l and then i like to do this one by one i found it was the easiest to do it like that i'm going to hit shift d to duplicate it and then without touching anything else i'm just going to hit s and then i'm just going to slightly oh oops I'm just going to slightly drag it out. So uh, you can hold shift to be more precise, but you basically want it so that you know you did it right when the outside is highlighted orange, but you can still see the red inside. Uh, and then it'll look like this. Now, while this is all still selected, you're going to go to the materials, create a new material, new, and I'm going to call this surface imperfections. Um, so yeah, just to recap that quickly, you go here, um, you make like when this happens, um, and you have this selected, you go down to the material properties, you hit the plus sign to make a new material. Um, and then you should have this part selected. You just hit assign. As you can see, it turns white, but if we look inside, we still have the red here, which is going to give us access to that in Lumion to change. Um, and so that way without doing too, anything too crazy, we can change both the, uh, the painting on the vase and then also the surface imperfection just based on where you're going to hover in Lumion. So let's do the other ones quickly as well. So I hit L, Shift D, S. I'm going to hold Shift just to get that perfect amount right there. L. And by the way, if you just hover over the thing and hit L and it'll select everything it's linked to and the object. So Shift D and then S. I'm going to hold Shift and then just slowly drag it out until you see that that right amount there. And I think you could just hit like S.1 or whatever, but I just kind of find it's, I just kind of like doing it this way. So yeah, um, I also realized I made a mistake. So that's kind of why I was saying you have to, uh, yeah, uh, you want this part selected like that, right? So as you can see, the red's not in, uh, selected on the inside. So you want to assign it right there. And I'll just do this one again. 
Uh, it's easiest, in my opinion, just to, if you make a mistake, just to backtrack there. It's because everything is selected like that. So, yeah. And then I'll put the surface imperfections on that one. And yeah, so that should be good to go. If there's a little bit of flickering, that's fine. Um, but as you can see, we basically created shells um, for this. And there may even be an easier way to do that. Um, this is just so quick and you never really need it that much. Like, I don't know if there's even like a modifier. Like, I feel like there is even a, but there might've been like a shell or something like that. But regardless, um, that should be good to go. So we're gonna go file, uh, file export FBX, uh, desktop, I'll call this vases or vases. Um, and that I think should be good. So we'll export this. Um, now what I'm going to do is obviously I'm just going to bring this in. So I'll import vases, call this 01. Now for this one, I am going to make this different than the window. So I am going to do uh, another uh, Photoshop edit but I'm just gonna use the different uh, dust file this time. So I'm gonna go down to uh, the folder I saved it in, uh, the dirt wipes. And yeah, as you can see, this one is a little bit different. Uh, I actually have this one in there already, so I'll just delete that and I'll bring this in. And as I said, the way that I like to do it is I just drag it here so that it gets its own tab. And now I'm gonna go up here to the image mode uh, RGB, image mode, RGB. So that's good. Now this one, uh, you probably shouldn't have to do any editing to it because this is like a really thick surface imperfection. Like it's really dirty. So that should be fine. We will create an alpha channel for this down at the bottom here with the plus sign. Just make sure that you're not in layers, you're in channels. Um, and then we'll go back to this one. I'm just going to flip it. Uh, as I said, that's just kind of the way that I, <laughs> it's kind of the way I learned. It might not be the most efficient way, but yeah. Uh, and now, so we'll make sure that we're on alpha one control V and also just to recap this again, if you're right here to do what I just did, hit control A, control X, and then yeah. And so if you hit control V that co uh, copies it in here. And if we click the RGB button, those will pop on. This is what you should see. So this one's a little bit easier to tell than the last material too, where all those white points are like really um, visible. And so that is what we want. So all of this, the, the stuff that's red is not going to be visible. Whereas the stuff that's like just a little bit reddish is going to be slightly visible, just slightly transparent. Whereas these parts here, you're going to be able to see, uh, almost perfectly. So, um, that should be good to go. So we'll save this as a Targa and that's in the correct folder. So I'll just save that there. We make sure it's on 32 bits, hit okay. Close that. And yeah, so now that that should be pretty much good to go. So I'm going to go surface imperfections, standard color map. Uh, we're going to go to the correct folder here and there we go. So, um, there's a few things that you can do with this. Um, you can, uh, as you can see, like if you turn the gloss up, you will kind of see a little bit of these sort of reflections. Like you can play around with the scale a little bit. This is by no means perfect but if you did want something kind of like quick and just to give that look you can do this um another thing you can do is like if you turn the reflectivity up and like the gloss you can kind of make it have this sort of like metallic look to help maybe match it as you can see once you click the maybe i can get a better a uh, little better lighting here i'll just drop a spotlight so we can see and uh, maybe i'll even drop a reflection cube in Oh, I already did. Okay. So yeah, once we hit, um, if you go in here and like click the preview, as you can see, it comes in. Um, but, uh, I think we can actually make that a little bit stand out a little bit more making this, uh, like white. So it, it, again, it's just playing around with it to get the, like the look that you want, but you can do it like this. So this is giving it more of this like gritty look to it. Um, but yeah, what you can also do as well is as you can see, if we, so the reason why I wanted to do it the way I did it in blender is that if we hit the outside of it, it's a surface imperfections, but look what happens when we hover over the inside, then you get the, um, actual material of it. So what we can do is go to standard. Um, we'll go just actually to, uh, color here. Oh no, not color. Sorry. Just standard. Um, and then I'll just pick it like red. I'll make it red, maybe make it a little less glossy, something like that. And, um, yeah. And so that's, uh, that's kind of how I would go about doing 
the vases or vases. Um, and so as you can see, you are getting that effect. Um, you do have to play around with it because it's kind of hard for me to sit here and go like, this is how you should do it. This is just kind of the tool of how to do it. You need to just kind of figure out like what works best for your scenes. And as I said, this doesn't work as well as it would in something like Blender um, or 3ds Max. But I do think it works well enough that if you have like a really boring surface, you might be able to just throw this on to kind of give it this illusion of like, I don't know, just something that's like being lived in. Um, and, you know, it's not terrible. Um, I, I feel like when you use real time render engines, you sometimes are going to have to kind of take that, um, you know, maybe like a reduced uh, uh, quality. Um, but yeah, so that's um, that's how you do that. There is one more thing I will actually mention. So in this one, I just have these um, hardwood floors in there. But there is something that I thought was kind of interesting when you get um, when you get the, the wood floor generator from Polygon. So if we open this up and um all right sorry yeah so that just took me a second to get into uh to get into this i'm not sure why the parameters were turned off and i just didn't know how to flick it back on but uh we should be good to do that now so the um what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to ash or sorry not ash the wood species we're gonna we can change this to, like whatever we want um, but the reason why I'm showing you this is because this can actually have built in service imperfections. So if it's specifically the hardwood floor that you're interested in this, uh, or interested in this, uh, tutorial for, then this is probably the better way of doing it. Um, so let's take a, I don't know, let's say like teak, maybe I'll put this on like a 2k resolution just so that it's a little bit easier to see. Um, and yeah, I think that that should be a pretty good angle to see this. So. Um, I think if we go down here to the finish, um, is it the age? Yeah. So you then you go to age, service imperfections, spill amount. So I'm going to maybe bring this up. Uh, it depends on what you want. This is like kind of like a coffee stain effect. Um, the opacity, I can bring this up more just so it's easier to see. Um, maybe there's a better one to show this actually. Uh, a plane might be better. Yeah, so the, like this might be just easier to kind of navigate with. So as you can see, you get those little like blemishes on the floor. But then what you can also do, the one that I kind of like is the uh, the mop residue. So if you turn that up, as you can see, you're getting that. And this I just find works better. Um, the flaw with doing it the way that I have it is that um, while you have more control over it and it does look okay, it doesn't quite capture, like it doesn't... Uh, sort of put it inside of the normal map in the same way that like something like blender would do just because you have more control over the um the textures so yeah if it is just hardwood floor that you're interested in i really recommend that you get the wood floor generator from uh polygon because it does give you a lot of really cool options just to, to customize exactly with what um what you need for hardwood floors um and you can get a lot of uh i guess like accuracy to what you uh are looking for in real life um, and yeah, that's, um, I'm not going to bring this into Lumion. I just kind of want to show that you can like play around with that. Um, this is what the surface imperfection is supposed to look like. So I know it's not perfect in Lumion, um, but hopefully it's, uh, you know, it's acceptable. Um, if people have, a uh, some better ideas of how I can kind of improve this technique, uh, I'd really appreciate it. I did play around with this for a while. Um, and this is like the best that I could kind of come up with. Um, but I still feel like it's kind of missing, like it's missing something like it's like, I know that like you, you could kind of fix the problem I'm talking about by putting the normal map into, or, uh, putting the roughness or gloss map into the normal map for the surface imperfections, but it just doesn't look right. Um, it doesn't stop the light underneath. Like in this example, like while you can still see it's there, like the light still kind of gets reflected even though it shouldn't. So. Um, I'm going to keep looking for a way to kind of improve that. Um, but I did think that it was at least close enough to kind of roll out to everyone so I could show you what I've uh, been working on. And, um, yeah, if there's anything that you saw that think, um, that you think you could improve this method, please let me know in the comments because I'd be really interested uh, to try some of that stuff out to see if I can get it to work. Um, if, uh, this is your first time stopping by the channel, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit, uh, the subscribe button for me to help me out with the YouTube algorithm. If you are already subscribed, Thank you very much. Um, I will see you in the next one and have a great night.